video. Now, about 200,000 people in the UK are diagnosed with heart failure each year, and most often after a heart attack. But scientists at the University of Edinburgh have uncovered crucial genetic changes linked to the damage, paving the way for cutting-edge treatment that could save millions of lives. I'm joined by Professor Andrew H. Baker, who's the Chair of Vascular Biology at the University of Edinburgh and Professor of Translational Cardiovascular Sciences at the British Heart Foundation. Crikey, I can't believe I did all that. I actually said all that straight. Sorry, Andrew, there's so much there. Andrew, talk to me about this. It's fascinating. OK, how, how, how did you manage to identify the gene that was actually causing the damage after a heart attack? Well, there's been developments of new technologies that have allowed us to uh, scan, if you like, uh, tissue uh, in, in patients who have had um, access to tissue for patients who have had myocardial infarctions or had transplants, so we have access to the tissue, or in models of disease where you can look in different regions of the heart that are damaged and not damaged and, and, and generate an atlas, if you like, of the genetic changes in the transcriptome, uh, this is part of the process that makes proteins, uh, and and then map that onto different areas, and then you can identify which genes are regulated in, particularly in the damage regions, and that understanding will help you design um, therapies that then can activate those processes to try and help better um, the blood vessel formation or the muscle. Uh, to try and regenerate around that damaged region. Wow. That's the basic so, concept. So hang on. So you get, so there's an, where, where do you find the gene though? Is it in the blood? Is it in, where, where are genes held in people, in, in the body? So in the, in, the, in the heart, then there are different types of cells. There's uh, cardiomyocytes, which is the muscle of the heart, uh, allows your heart to pump. But also that needs to be supplied with blood so you have small and large blood vessels that uh, then uh, uh, give oxygen and nutrients to the heart. And they become damaged, collectively become damaged uh, after a heart attack. And we're in interested in understanding what happens, not necessarily in the really damaged region, because that's dead tissue. We need to replace that with new tissue. And we're interested in the area around that that can be salvaged and nurtured. And the genes that are, are within those particular cells have a very particular signature. The uh, cells in the blood vessel are different from the cardiomyocyte. So we, we can look at those at the single cell resolution now and understand where those changes happen. Not all cells of the blood vessels are the same. They're all a little bit different. So now with this new technology, we can look across these regions and identify cell-specific changes that are occurring after a heart attack. And the key thing is really that if we can rejuvenate um, the heart after a heart attack, particularly in patients who have quite a severe heart attack, then uh, we can alleviate that change, that detrimental change in heart function that is associated with patients who might transit into longer term heart failure. I see. Wow, that's fascinating. That really is fascinating stuff. Because when I thought, when people say they have a heart failure, I thought, well, that, that's it then, isn't it? But clearly, that, you know, now there is some sort of treatment, potentially, form of gene therapy that could stop people from going into that spiral. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Andrew H. Barker. It was really good to talk to you. That, that explains things very, very clearly. He's the Chair of Vascular Biology at the University of Edinburgh and Professor of Translational Cardiovascular Services with the British Heart Foundation.